Reports say the clampdown may be the result of a particular newspaper report that about 12 military generals were being court-martialed for aiding Boko Haram. The military has since denied the report, saying it is not true. It also says the clampdown on some newspapers is just a mere security routine and not targeted at the content or operation of the affected newspapers. But journalists are not buying that. It's not usual. If it's usual, then there would not be an outrage over it. It's unusual, it's undemocratic, it's unexplained. He told us that it's about security, and that does not explain anything because we are not really in war situation all over the country. And then you cannot make the truth of the newspapers the casualty. On the streets of Lagos, you don't get the sense that the media is being hounded. As a matter of fact, where I am now is a newsstand, and uh, as you can see, all the papers are here. Now, with the exception of um, the Vanguard newspaper that has these as its bold headline saying, Boko Haram soldiers wage war on newspapers, uh, you, you don't really have other newspapers reporting it. And one of the newspapers that has been reportedly targeted by the military action is leadership newspaper. But, but then the newspaper is on the stand. Of course, the vendor here told me he took delivery of his papers very early in the morning and leadership paper, newspaper was, was one of them. But reports indicate the clampdown is worse in some other parts of the country. In some places, they, they even detained the vehicles and detained the driver until evening to just to ensure that they could not circulate. So it was a well-planned action, you know, and it was coordinated in most parts of the country. Meanwhile, with 50 days now gone without any trace of the schoolgirls kidnapped by Boko Haram, the United Kingdom has now called a ministerial meeting for June to discuss new strategies to combat the sect. The meeting comes after a similar one in Paris last month. But some analysts are now expressing reservations over this round of meetings. You know, but again, you want to really ask yourself why issues, fundamental issues that have to do with the progress, the welfare, the security of Africa, you know, have to be discussed in the capitals of uh, uh, some of uh, these uh, former colonial powers. You know, I think this is a question a lot of people are beginning to ask themselves, why these meetings cannot take place now on African soil. Such meetings are likely to come under more criticism in the coming days if the Chibok girls continue to remain in captivity. For now, President Jonathan is assuring the country his government will soon end the insurgency. All what I can assure you is that those issues of oh, equipment or oh, this and that, we are handling them. And God willing, these challenges of Boko Haram or other criminal elements will soon come to be history in this country. It's an assurance Nigerians will be desperately hoping to hold on to. Deja Badmo, CCTV, Lagos, Nigeria.